Right, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar today. Uh, we're doing mortgages for contractors, so how to prepare yourself for your mortgage application. So I think there's a lot of myths, um, false truths out there about getting a, a mortgage if you're a contractor. So we're going to try and talk you through those, give you some tips, pointers, and then answer some of your questions too. So let's kick it off. Um, so here we go. So my name's Ben. Um, I run the sales team here at Crunch and joining me, we've got the expert on the mortgage topic, Jamie. Thanks for coming Hi, along, Jamie. So Jamie's senior mortgage consultant here at Crunch and is responsible for bringing on uh, a lot of our mortgages here. So first of all, I want to say uh, welcome to the, the vast array of people that we might have joining us today. We've got, I know we've got a fair few Crunch clients. Um, we've got some people from Computer Futures, Real Staffing, um, Creative Pool, uh, Huxley. So uh, yeah, thank you everyone for, for joining and taking the time out of your day to join us. So like I said at the start, there's going to be a Q&A section at the end of the webinar. Now on the go to webinar uh, dashboard or widget thing that you have there on your screen, there is a, a field where you can fill in questions. So feel free to get in any mortgage based question that you want and Jamie will circle back to them at the end and hopefully we can answer as many of them as we possibly can. If we don't get to any of them, uh, we'll email you all direct um, and follow up anyway. You're going to get a, a copy of the presentation after this webinar too. So a little bit about Crunch for those of you that may not know about us um, too much. We're at the heart of what we do is we're an accountancy service. So we do accounting for contractors, consultants, freelancers. Uh, but alongside that, we've got an, a whole other suite of products as well, which is where Jamie comes in. So things like mortgages, specifically for those people that are self-employed, small business insurance, advice on investments and pensions. So all those things that may be important to someone that is self-employed or just starting out on the journey of being self-employed. Um, we've got loads of different products that may be able to help you out along the way. So. What we're going to be talking about is, first of all, understanding what a contractor mortgage is, how it might be different from your traditional mortgage as uh, a PAYE employee, um, what you need to do, so next steps you need to take in order to prepare for your contractor mortgage. Then Jamie's going to take us through some case studies and then we'll do the Q&A bit after that. So like I say, get those questions in at any point. You don't feel like you have to wait to the end to type them in. So, first of all, understanding a contract, the mortgage. Now, at Crunch, in an accountancy perspective, we take on all different types of contractors and all different types of fields. So, um, what does it mean in a mortgage capacity in terms of what type of contractors can can you help? Um, in the main, the typical clients we see coming through uh, Crunch, um, typically offering professional services such as IT, project management, and even creative design working in the TV industry, that sort of thing. So typically these people will have a contract with with, um, with their client. They have a limited company that will sit behind it to handle the tax side of things. Uh, typically the, the contract will be on a day or an hourly rate or a weekly rate. Um, depending on the industry, they will, they will have an end date or uh, they may be open-ended on, on, on a rolling basis. Um, typically looking for people with, with it, you know experience in their industry or Ideally, minimum 12 months, sometimes two years. Okay, perfect. So, when you're thinking about a contractor mortgage, um, like I said, there's there sometimes can be a difference between um, what it means to have a contractor mortgage and a PAYE mortgage, and there's some myths or. or... Uh, well, the, the, the good thing about contractor mortgages is, is typically um, the client. Let's take a you know someone who's working in project management. They're going into the client's office five days a week using the client systems, you know, overheads. So whilst that they are being paid for a limited company, we can use the gross contract of the value, value of the contract over say 46 to 48 weeks, um, because it's, it's no different to somebody on a PAYE traveling into work. So um, rather than using the drawings from a limited company, we are actually looking to use the contract value, almost like, it's almost like their turnover essentially mm -hmm. we're using for the mortgage. Okay, so there's that misconception there, isn't it, that you need to have kind of two or three years worth of accounts before you can even kind of entertain no, it. Yeah, I mean, on, on the contract which... side of things, that, that it's kind of, you know, they're high demand profession. So yeah. people tend to go from contract to contract. So, you know, don't, you don't need to have one or two years accounts. Mm -hmm. um, we can just simply work off your, you know, your current contract. 
Um, it's a smooth process. You, the banks would simply look at the contract value and underwrite on that basis rather than delving into your accounts and expenses, mm. um, which people get nervous about. And rates are still highly competitive, mm. you know, high street rates. I suppose it's very important to talk to, especially someone like you that has like a vast array of experience with dealing with these contract mortgages, right? Yeah, often we pick up clients all the time that, you know, often brokers will maybe specialise in mm. different fields. And if they haven't done a contract mortgage before, you know, naturally they're going down the account route when they don't yeah. need to. Yeah. So, you know, we're dealing with it every day of the week. So definitely get in touch with ourselves. Okay. So there's all sorts of different types of mortgages. Now, I'm sure anyone that has a mortgage know that there are different types, but is there any limit to the type of mortgage in which a contractor could get? No, you, you, your standard list of, you know, kind of mortgages out there, people looking to remortgage, whether it's just to improve on rate and terms, or, you know, we think a lot of people at the minute, rather than move, home improvements, extensions, mm. uh, first time buyers, help to buy, right to buy, shared ownership mortgages, buy to let mortgages literally mm. any any sort of you know sort of purchase of a property we yeah sure you can yeah. help brilliant uh, right so now that we've thought about you know the differences between an, uh, a PAYE mortgage or an employee employee mortgage and a contractor mortgage what do we need to do in order to prepare ourselves to get that so what kind of things would I need to provide you in terms of income requirements for a contract mortgage um, well, it depends on, on the line of work you're in, um, you know, the, the sort of contractors we're looking for to start with mm. is people that are in IT, um, generally that's the most uh, the most flexible lenders can be in IT, um, just given with, you know, this day and age, computers kind of rule mm. everything. Um, those with 12 months or more contracting, mm. so if you're in a different field, whether it's creative design or you know, TV, media, mm -hmm. anything like that, then as long as you've got the 12 months minimum there, contracting history, um, and also those that may not necessarily be in IT or have 12 months, but the, the value of the contract is over 75,000 per year or, or 500 pounds a day. Mm -hmm. If you can, um, if you kind of fit one of those three categories, which, which most people should, you know, mm -hmm. you're good to get a contract mortgage. That's brilliant. That's pretty easy to, to think. So as long as you fit into one of those three categories or more than one of those three categories, then you should be good to go. Yeah. Um, now, one of the, the beauties of contracting, I suppose, or freelancing is that you can, you know, be a bit more selective about how you work and when you work more particularly. What if you were to have gaps in your contracts and you, you there was a period of time where you weren't, weren't working? Yeah, I mean, most of the time people clients we see will work pretty solid throughout the year but mm. you know that's not everyone so we have people that may like to work hard during the start of the year and then have the summer off yeah, which sure. is obviously you know it's why people are you know doing that sort of, of work but um lenders are typically happy with four to six six week gaps between contracts mm -hmm. um some will even go as high as three months um, it, it depends how it pans out. If you've got three months working, three months gap, three months working, three mm. months gap, then they're not going to be able to use a 46 week average mm. because clearly you're only working six months of the year. But there are lenders that can be flexible and, and they'll underwrite accordingly. Um, typically, over the course of the year, most lenders, like I say, 12, 12 weeks accumulated gaps over a year period is kind of is really the maximum anything yeah, sure. more than that would be kind of bespoke underwriting um an area which we've moved into recently because we're getting quite a few inquiries of people on maternity and paternity pay mm -hmm. so those that have been contracting for a number of years you know have had their had their baby taken nine months a year out mm -hmm. back into contract you know typically if you obviously did up self-employed accounts you're gonna have a big gap there in your income mm -hmm. um, however we've secured mortgages for people that have shown they have the history and have secured themselves a new contract great so you talked a little bit earlier on about the gross contract value so that the total value of your contract why is that important as a contractor trying to get yeah so kind of i touched on it at the start so Working in high demand industries, you know, IT, media again, uh, it's, it's almost treated like PAY. Yeah, sure. So, so um, the way they're looking at it, it's almost like, again, the, the turnover. So they're looking at if you're working 46 weeks of a year, um, they're looking at that gross annual income because typically if you compare that to, say, someone like yourself, mm. you've got to come into work. Mm -hmm. You pay for your, your bus or your train. Mm -hmm. You're paying for your lunch. Mm -hmm. Pretty much the same as a contractor. That's yeah. all, they're going into the client's offices or premises, mm. or they're working from home. So, 
technically the expenses are, are relatively low mm -hmm. whilst the accounts you know the accountant's job is to, to, to save on tax so mm -hmm. that's why we're really looking at the contract value because you know affordability isn't really the issue it's, it's more yeah, getting sure. to the level of lending required okay um right so do you want to summarize everything for this for us and then we'll go through some case studies as well yeah so yeah contractors freelancers you can borrow off your day rate weekly rate we don't have to look at your company accounts uh gaps in your contract no problem you know we can work with this um obviously there are certain criteria but you know up to three months a year you know, that's something we can definitely work with uh history and experience is key so if you haven't got the history in contracting then the experience in your chosen industry is key there. Um, standard mortgage rules apply. So with no special rates, you know, higher rates, anything like that. In fact, we often get exclusive rates, so you can actually uh, put yourself in a better position. Um, as minimum as 5% deposit. So whether it's, um, you're looking to use help to buy or a shared ownership scheme or just a standard purchase, you only be 5%. Um, typical documents we, we would need um, for a contract of mortgages. So um, signed copies of your contract. So signed by yourself and the client. Uh, three months business bank statements to verify the income uh, obviously coming in off the contract. And then uh, money laundering, proof of identity and re residence and uh, proof of your deposit. Right, so case studies, here we go. I've got three here, haven't you? Yep, so just we thought we'd kind of um, give you some detail on a, on a couple of um, example cases here. So number one, uh, yeah, freelance copywriter. Uh, Gavin's been contracting for five years. There's a current day rate of 350 pounds a day, uh, typically working on a six month contract that's, that's renewable. Um, from his own limited company, he's only been taking 35,000 for, for tax purposes and, and that's what he's needed to live off. Um, he approached his own bank, uh, offered 150,000, um, which is a little under five times income. However, based on his contract value, we we're able to achieve a mortgage of 400,000. So, uh, you know, quite a considerable difference there. That's great. Okay, we're seeing this uh, quite a bit as well. You, you know, people that once they got their, their industry experience, contacts, um, they, they moving from PAYE to their first contract. Um, you know, a lot of people are quite nervous about this, you know, ha, you know, not just from the fact of having a guaranteed income, but, um, you know, getting mortgages, etc. So, uh, Timothy, a software developer, um, been working PAYE for seven years in, in, in the IT industry. He's just left his permanent job and set up a limited company to work freelance. On his first contract, six months, 450 a day, um, approached another broker who told he would need one minimum of one year's accounts. Uh, we managed to secure a mortgage based on his contract value over a 48 week year. He also was able to use the help to buy scheme, only a 5% personal deposit, and we achieved high street rates. Perfect. <clears throat> okay, so rolling contracts. Um, we, we see this more and more, more in kind of TV production, media, um, creative design, that, that sort of uh, industry. So Sean has been working in TV production for just over a year. So on a rolling day rate, so no specified end date. Um, previous to the contract, also had 18 months in the same industry. Um, High Street Banks had told her that she would need at least two years company accounts or self-assessments to qualify. Um, working on the, the last 12 months, her, um, her invoices were coming out to 80,000 um, and we secured the, um, the mortgage on the base of, of, of the last 12 months, uh, given that the contract was likely to continue at the same ratio. That's great. So it's good to get some real life examples, I suppose. To put yeah, I mean, most people should be able to relate to one of these uh, yeah, sure. case studies. And finally, um, obviously the beauty of freelancing, people you know, like to work with different clients. So uh, Katie's a prime example of someone. She's a freelance designer uh, working on a, on a couple of different projects, spending three days a week on one at 350 a day and uh, another two days at 250 a day. Um, she has two years uh, history of, of doing this. Um, the, the contract value averaged over the two contracts over the 12 month period um, was used, working on, on an average of 46 weeks of that income. Um, we managed to secure a mortgage of a 5% deposit. 
the minimum contract value for these sorts of scenarios tends to be about 50,000. So um, working over that average, she was, she was well above the minimum there. And we were able to secure a mortgage on that basis for her. Okay, so the Q&A section, let's see uh, what kind of questions we've got. And hopefully yeah. you can do best to answer some of them. So let's have a look at what we've got. So here we go. First of all, when I'm asked for my income, should I input the amount my limited company took in for that year? Um, it depends on the scenario. So you know, often we, you know, we will do mortgages for contractors um, and, and they aren't necessarily asking for, for the maximum lending. So there's no wrong or right answer here. Normally the best scenario is to, is to give us a call and we can talk you through it. Um, we can work off the limited company income or the, or the gross contract income if you feel that um, that's going to put you in a better light for the lender. Okay, let's try this one. Um, I took a mortgage two years ago while a full-time employee. I'm looking to remortgage in the next few months after the introductory rate changes. I might be limited in my provider as I live in an ex-council flat. I had to go to Nationwide as my other providers would not cover the building. What options do I have? Uh, I forgot to mention that I switched to contracting six months ago. So um, depending on the industry you're in, so you've got six months history. Um, if you've got another contract of six months or your income meets the limits we, we outlined earlier in IT, that they're not a problem. Uh, ex council flat um, depends where it is, what the value is, the construction type, etc. Um, we would need a little bit more detail on that, but you know, I'm pretty sure we'd be able to to find something competitive for you on on the later rates. Okay, here's another one. Does the mortgage need to be in my personal capacity, i.e., as an individual, or can it also be in the limited company's name? If you're going to be using it for your residential purposes, it needs to be in your personal name. So the only way limited company mortgages we can do are, will be for buy to let. So if you're letting to a, a non-family member, um, you know, standard tenancy, then then we, we can do mortgages in your limited company name, your trading company, or you might want to set up a, a special purpose vehicle for, for letting. But yeah, we can certainly help with those. Okay, you've got one here. What if my day rate is under £500 and I only have a three month contract? Does the current contract value need to be over 75k or is that for the whole year? Uh, the 75k, that's only for people with less than 12 months contracting history. So if you're um, in a three month contract if we, if, and you've got history of at least 12 months, then, then fine, we can we can look at lending now. We also have a, have a other lenders that have a 50,000 minimum. So um, that was more for people, the 75,000 were for the people that less than 12 months and not may not be in IT. Okay, let's try this. So what are the banks that are happy to lend on contract value? Um, the majority of the high street banks um, we can look at, um, we, I wouldn't go for all the lenders now, mm. but you know, people you would recognize, um, Clydesdale, Nationwide, NatWest, there's a number of lenders. Um, some banks such as NatWest though, you, you can only obtain contract and mortgages via a specialist broker. Um, so I'd always say to get in touch because um, what we find is a lot of clients will need to have an interview up to anywhere up to two hours. Um, and, and if you're then told at the end you don't meet their criteria, it's a, it can be a bit of a painful task. So the way we work is we will assess your circumstances, assess the market for criteria and rates at the same time. So we'll come back to you with the most uh, you know, cost effective option for you. Okay, what about this one here? I'm married and have a joint mortgage. My partner is a teacher in full-time employment. Does that affect my options? You mentioned exclusive offers. For contractors, would joint mortgages be possible there too? Yeah, quite typical is that um, the partner, you know, will be in a different industry, may be employed or self-employed. But um, if we're going to a, a lender that has an exclusive rate, then um, you know it, it won't make a difference if one's employed and one's a contractor. No. Okay, slightly longer question. My wife and I currently have a mortgage, but as we've had a baby in the last year and my wife isn't going back to work, I'm the sole earner. Our fixed term mortgage ends in June 2019 and I'm wanting to go freelance as a photographer in the next six months. 
how will this affect renewing our mortgage or taking out a new one? Um, it'd be good to know who, who your mortgage is with. Um, we are able to access um, lenders direct and switch rates. So absolute worst case scenario, we can move you to a new mortgage with your current provider um, without any underwriting. So obviously it will restrict you and not being able to look at the whole market, but I wouldn't worry. You'll always be able to renew with your current provider. Uh, right. As the director of my company, with no other employees, I have a small salary, but make up the majority of my earnings through dividends. Are they considered as my total earnings? And what amount could I borrow based on salary alone versus salary plus dividends? Um, if we're looking at a limited company income, the, the way lenders will assess will either be salary and dividends. That they wouldn't just look at your salary because typically that's a lower le level, you know, i.e. 10,000. Um, the alternative way we can look at your company profit plus your salary. So if perhaps you've only drawn a fraction of your dividends for tax reasons or, you know, whatever, you know, the reason is, we can look at what you could have drawn. Um, equally, if you're a contractor, we can look at your contract income. So there's, there's different ways we can look at that. Typically, anywhere from four and a half to five times your income. Um, uh, are the mortgage payments taken from the personal account or from my company account? Personal account. Um, any particular considerations if your client is overseas? Does that change anything? Yes, it does. So, um, depending on the sort of mortgage you're looking, if you're if you're an expat, um, you're not paying tax here. Um, we can get mortgages for people uh, for expats. So, whether that's a property to let out or if you have a family member living in it. Um, it depends on the country you're in um, and also the state of your employment of, of the country you're living in. So um, sometimes if you're self-employed in certain countries, you need to have um, one of kind of the, the, the top end accountants doing your books. Okay. What if you've only been freelance with a limited company for three months, but were freelancing through an umbrella company before that? Would that count? We'd be looking at using the contract value in that case. So you know, like we said, for an early in the presentation, we're looking at the contract value. So uh, how you're getting paid from the from the contract, we're not necessarily interested in. It's, it's more the contract value. Okay. Uh, last year I made a 40K pension contribution, which reduced my company's profit. Will this impact how much I can borrow? Assuming you're not a contractor and we're having to use your accounts, with some lenders, yes, that they, they will look, be looking at either your salary and your dividends or, or your profits and your salary. However, there are some lenders that will factor back in pension contributions, uh, healthcare premiums back into the income. Um, the, the way they're looking at it is that, you know, if you needed that income to live off, you wouldn't have paid it into the pension. So there's a common sense uh, underwriting approach there. Okay. So... My partner has just finished a contract and is taking a break. Would it be best for her to find a contract before starting the process or, or both of us contract? Yes, so, so if we're to use contract income, then currently it would only be, if only one of you are contracting, it, it would only be based on one contract. So if, if we're needing the income from two contracts, um, would need to be in a current contract. Okay, so here we go. Why should you use Crunch and not contact lenders directly? So the, the main reason is like we explained earlier is that we, we're doing all of the research for you. Um, so we know exactly which lenders to go to. So we've often had clients go into a bank. I did a mortgage for someone last week, spent two months going for a mortgage with one particular high street bank only to find out right at the end they don't offer contract mortgages. So I managed to secure him a mortgage, uh, direct access to an underwriter within three days to make sure he didn't lose his property. So, you know, we know the lenders to approach to, we get it done quickly for you, we get the most competitive rates. Okay, so oops. Um, this has come up a couple of times by the looks of things. What fees are involved in arranging a mortgage through Crunch? Okay, so the, the service we offer is fully comprehensive. So you know, you'll have one point of contact, direct email for the whole process. So we not only just set the mortgage up for you, we handle all the processing for you. 
and then we'll also assist with the legal process. So we're staying, if it's a purchase, we're staying in contact with your solicitors. So it's not, here's your mortgage, there you go. We will handle the whole process. Typically for the whole process start to finish, our fee is around about 495 pounds. Uh, right, what about this one? How does my credit history affect my application? I'm currently on 400 pounds a day on a 12 month contract. Uh, we have access to a number of specialist lenders that will work with people with, with credit blips. So depending on when the blip was and how severe it was, um, I would say if you've had two years totally clear, it can definitely help. If you've had some uh, you know minor issues in the last two years, again, we can help. If you've had a quite a you know a large issue, I don't know, a county court judgment, ten thousand pounds this year, unlikely. So something we can certainly help with. If you want to get in touch with your credit file, we'll, we'll happily have a look at it for you. Uh, this might be a quick one. So you got a, I've got a long contract history and looking to remortgage. Is that generally easier? Perfect. Yeah, the history is there, and you know your existing uh, mortgage holder, then then definitely be able to assist with that. Um, I'm a self-employed photographer with about 10 years experience in, in the industry. I have a limited company and have long-term clients, but no specific contracts. They just book me on a job-by-job -job basis. These typically last between one and two days. Can you still get a mortgage? That would be back. If you've got 10 years experience, um, we'd be looking at using your limited company accounts or personal tax returns. So, yeah, that, that's not really a contract basis, that one. Um, right. Do you have to do your accounting with Crunch in order to use the mortgage service with Crunch? No, no, we're, we're happy to, to help everybody. Um, hopefully the two tie in well and if you're happy with the mortgage service, you eventually come over to the accounting side and vice versa. Uh, is the fee payable only if we take a mortgage through Crunch or immediately or immediately to initiate the search? Payable on completion. So once you've, the mortgage has been done, dusted, completed, you know, we, we pay once the work's been completed. So halfway through the process, you cancel or you lose a property, whatever reason, then there's no fee to pay. Okay, I have two mortgage products, a big and small home improvement top up, but would like to borrow more and consolidate all into one new mortgage. Is this doable? There's enough equity in the house, stroke loan. Yeah, typical scenario, people were um, looking to consolidate either sub accounts of mortgages or unsecured borrowing or renovations yes we're looking to we, we could simply just roll it all into one new mortgage for you okay uh, <laughs> I have two open-ended contracts totaling to six days per week who need who needs sleep right will both of them be accounted for the mortgage amount some people love their job right yeah, um, yeah so um, as long as it's sustainable the history is there um, totally you know you know why not um, can use both contracts um, so that was any history depending on the history so if you've just gone PAY straight into um, two open-ended contracts then it might be a little bit tough so probably want at least 12 months history or something like that all right well that I think that kind of takes us to the kind of half an hour mark do you want to answer one more maybe um, um, this one yeah look at that one. so my mortgages with Santander on interest only it's up for renewal soon, but I only recently started contracting. Can you help me renew a Santander or move it? Can I still get interest only as a contractor? Um, it depends on the on the limits of, of the contract. So um, earlier on, if you refer to a few of the earlier slides, so if you're an IT, um, you've just gone into contracting or, or your, your contract value is over 75,000 a year or 500 pound a day, we can certainly help. Uh, look at that. Uh, interest only is, is another question, so it depends on how much equity is in the property, how you're going to pay it back, um, but there are lenders that can certainly help. Uh, worst case scenario, we can always look to see what Santander will offer you as a, as a renewal product. Um, right, should we go with this, should we answer this one as a final one? Okay. How much does day rate affect mortgage rate? Can I aim for a higher day rate to get a cheaper mortgage? Of course, yeah, I mean, the, the income drives the, the mortgage um, you know, amount you can borrow. Um, if you want access to kind of pretty much every lender, then on a contract basis, then if you aim for four to four and a half times your income, that's going to cover most of them. If, if you're looking for five times income, then that's always going to narrow the lenders a little bit. So, um, yeah, we can obviously try and get as much money as you can out of your client, definitely. Okay, perfect. So there was a whole load of questions that came in. So thank you everyone for sending in your questions. 
We're going to follow up after um, after the webinar with answers to all and you know the copy of the of the presentation. So if we didn't get to your question, um, Jamie or one of Jamie's colleagues will be able to get back to you with those answers. Um, a few other things to tie off before we go. Um, a good thing for everyone to join is, is something called Crunch Chorus. It's a free community that we run uh, where you can get access to things like these webinars, business guides, all sorts of um, articles and blog posts. We do regular meetups as well. So everyone can jump on there and go to crunch.co.uk uh, crunch forward slash chorus and sign up. That would be brilliant. Uh, there's some recommended resources and reading here. Again, these will come out to you at the end of the webinar. Um, so check those out and, and you might be able to, to find something uh, interesting. If you want to talk to Jamie or anyone in Jamie's team, the number is 0330-037-1671 or you could visit the website crunch.co.uk forward slash mortgages. So thanks very much for that, Jamie. That was thank really you. informative. Uh, thank you everyone for joining. So uh, we'll see you next time.